Hi, Morgan here for Onefinity, and today I'm going to leverage the accuracy of my CNC to make this table saw sled with built-in positive stops for common angles. Like many of you, the CNC is just one of the many tools that I have in my shop, and to get all those other tools to perform the best that they possibly can to make the stuff I want to make and make it well, I use jigs. Lots of jigs. Just so many jigs. But what good is a jig if it's not accurate? Not very. For instance, let's say you want to make a simple picture frame with mitered corners. If you cut your parts just slightly off, even by just a half a degree, multiply that error by four, and your picture frame is going to look pretty bad. And that's why it's so important that the jigs you use on other tools are precise. Making your jigs with a CNC will make them dead on. So here's the basic design of the sled. It's 16 inches by 12 inches, with a grid of tracks spaced four inches apart on center to lock down fences, stops, hold downs, whatever. Every angle registers from a common pivot point, so all I have to do is insert some pins or dowels into the holes that correspond with the angle I want to cut, bump the piece up to it, and lock it down with the hardware or clamps. Then I just add a stop to cut multiple parts identical to one another. The grid of dovetail tracks are four inches in from the edges and four inches apart from each other, and they're cut in two steps. First with a quarter inch diameter bit to hog out most of the waste, then with a dovetail bit to create the profile for the tracks. For toolpathing purposes, we'll use the same vector for both. We'll get to that in a minute. The miter slot runner I'm using is the Zero Play Miter Bars from Microjig, which is mounted to the sled from the top with three machine screws, again, four inches apart on center. On this table saw, the center of the miter slot is four and three quarters of an inch from the keeper side of the blade. The holes for those will need to be counterboard so the screw head sits below the surface. So I'll go ahead and make those half inch diameter, same as the pinholes. All right, now let's figure out how we're gonna toolpath this thing. I'm gonna cut the whole thing out of a larger piece to ensure that everything's square. If I cut it to size on the table saw and don't zero my X and Y axes correctly, or if it's not secured to the wasteboard perfectly square, all my cuts could end up slightly off, which, you know, defeats the purpose. So when you set up your job in toolpathing software, I'm using Carveco, by the way, you'll wanna make the dimensions of the job one inch larger than the finished sled on all four sides. We'll see why in a minute. In this case, it'll be 18 inches wide by 14 inches high, registering from the center. Import your vector, make sure it's centered on the model, and group everything that'll be cut the same way with the same bit. For instance, all my relief grooves will be cut with a quarter inch spiral end mill and at the same depth, so those can all go in one group. Let's start with the engraving toolpath. And surprise, it's not actually an engraving toolpath. It's a profile toolpath. Here's why. I did it that way because the text that I use to mark the angles are bubble letters, and an engraving toolpath would want to clear everything out inside the lines but I kind of like the look of this lettering, so I just toolpathed it as a profile toolpath cutting along the lines, not inside or outside. We're gonna use a 90 degree V-bit cutting at a depth of 0.02 inches. No need to make them any deeper than that. I'll run this at 150 inches per minute with a plunge rate of 50 inches per minute. And let's render that preview. All right, everything looks good there. Now all of our angles are marked, let's start working on the tool paths that use a quarter inch spiral bit. Those will be the holes for our locating pins, the relief cuts for the dovetail tracks, and the holes for mounting the miter slot runner. The pin holes are all a half inch diameter and the pivot point is located one inch from the back edge and two inches in from the left side of the sled. I made those 0.2625 inches in diameter because I found that the area clearance tool in Carveco wouldn't work with the hole just being a straight quarter inch using a quarter inch bit. Anyway. I did these holes as an area clearance toolpath cutting full depth. It's called area clearance in Carveco, which is the equivalent to a pocket toolpath if you're using Vectric. And if you're using something other than Vectric or Carveco, I have no idea what it's called. And I know for the sake of brevity, we say three quarter inch plywood, but it never actually is. You sure about that? You sure about that? That's why I always recommend using a caliper to determine the actual thickness of your material and toolpath accordingly. I have the spindle running at 20,000 RPMs at a feed rate of 120 inches per minute. The next group is all the half inch diameter holes for the pins, the counterbores, for the runner, as well as some half inch diameter holes at the end of each track, and you'll see why in a minute. I grouped them together and created an area clearance toolpath, cutting a half inch deep for all of them. I didn't change the settings from the last toolpath, so again, 120 inches per minute, 20,000 RPMs. The next group is the grid of relief grooves that'll eventually be dovetail tracks. The reason I have those in there is to hog out most of the waste prior to running the dovetail bit. 
The profile of that bit is pretty aggressive and the carbide on it is in a down cut orientation, meaning that it's designed to eject dust down into the cut to preserve the appearance of the top surface. So the less dust getting crammed down into that groove, the better. Anyway, the relief grooves are going to be just a simple profile toolpath, 120 inches per minute, 20,000 RPMs, cutting 0.3625 inches deep. The next toolpath is just a rectangle, the shape of the sled. This will be the cutout toolpath that separates the sled from the larger piece. It's a profile toolpath cutting outside the vector at full depth, 120 inches per minute, 20,000 RPMs. Even though I took just about every possible measure to secure the part to the wasteboard, I'm still going to add some bridges to the toolpath to help keep the part in place for the last operation. In carve code, they're called bridges. In Vectric, they're called tabs. Same thing, different name. Moving on to the last toolpath, the dovetail tracks. Because this is an undercut bit, it needs to be run at its final depth in a single pass. Otherwise, you'll end up with these weird steps rendering the tracks unusable. That's also why I created the clearance pockets at the end of each track to give the dovetail bit a place to plunge outside of the material into empty space so it can advance into the cut at full depth without creating unnecessary half circles around the edge of the sled. So this will be a profile toolpath similar to the one that we ran for the quarter inch bit for the relief groups. So you select the same vector group, create a new profile toolpath, and select a half inch end mill for the operation. Even though this is actually a dovetail bit, there's really no need to mess around with adding the profile to your tool library. All the CNC really needs to know is the diameter of the widest part of the bit, which is a half inch. Knowing that, the software is going to make the toolpath the exact same way. It's almost like we're tricking the machine. Which, I don't know if I should feel bad about. Oh well, it'll be our little secret. Make sure that you set the step down to at least the finished depth or more, otherwise the software will tell the machine to cut it in multiple passes. I set the step down for this bit to half inch with a feed rate of 100 inches per minute and running the spindle at 18,000 RPMs. And once you're done with that one, hey, you're finished tool pathing. Congratulations. Everyone's proud of you. Me especially. At this point, just save your tool paths according to the bit they use. I'll save the first one with the V-bit as its own tool path. Then everything that uses a quarter inch spiral bit will be grouped into one tool path. Then the one with a dovetail bit will be its own tool path. Drag those bad boys onto a thumb drive and stick it in the machine. Open and load the first tool path. This one uses a 90 degree V-bit, so put one of those in your router or spindle. Because this whole thing is getting cut out of a larger piece, I set the X and Y zero to the center of the material. So mark the dead center of the material, and once it's secured to the wasteboard, zero out your X and Y axis on that mark. Then just probe for Z, and we're ready to roll. Alright, after that first one is done, swap out the V-bit for a quarter inch spiral end mill. Open the next toolpath, which includes a bunch of stuff, but it's all cut with the same bit, so the machine will run it all at once. Again, probe for Z because you changed bits, then run it. After you're done with the quarter inch bit toolpath, install a half inch 14 degree dovetail bit. And again, probe for Z, then run it. And there you go, all cut. Now just separate the sled from the waist however you like to do it. Flush trim the bridges or tabs, whatever you want to call them, and do any cleanup you think is necessary. Sanding, routing edge profiles, whatever. Now I feel like I need to stop right there just to let you know that this project video isn't intended to get you to just go buy a bunch more stuff and make the exact same thing that I'm making. That's not what I'm trying to do. It's meant to demonstrate how you can integrate your CNC into your workflow and use the precision that it gives you to improve your experience with every other tool you have in your shop. Use it to make whatever is going to make you more productive in your shop. So, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and finish this project. Okay, I'm going to install the miter slot runner. I made the screw holes for mounting it oversized to allow for adjustment, so just make sure it's square to the table, then tighten that sucker down. You can use pretty much anything for your pins as long as they're half inch diameter or extremely close to it. Wood, plastic, metal, whatever. I'm using some aluminum rod I cut into small sections. I just keep one pin in the pivot point hole and the other in the hole that corresponds with the angle I want to cut. So rather than a solid piece, the pins actually act as the fence. Then I just set up a stop to make sure all my parts are uniform and go to town. And look at that, the precision of a CNC on a tape. So if you want to make a sled like this one, 
awesome. The cut files for both Vetric and Carveco will be available for free on the Onefinity user forum. And you know it's that time, getting close to the end of the video, I gotta say all that stuff. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you're first on the scene whenever we post new videos. Well, I sure hope you found this helpful or at least inspired you to use the same concept to make other jigs and fixtures in your shop, whatever it may be. All right, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching.